So we're at the uh, Computer History Museum seeing the new Revolutions exhibit and we're in the uh, software area and one of the gurus of software, Don. Yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for everything you've done for programmers around the world because on Twitter I, I took a picture of you and already people are saying, oh man, I learned how to program from Don, I read his books, he's a guru. All around the world you've impacted the, the, the art and the craft of software, so thank you. Okay, well I can only, uh, I can, I can only demean myself in your eye by speaking now. <laughs> I'm a better writer than a speaker, but uh, and also a uh, day like this, uh, well, even though I'm kind of old, uh, I have to point out that uh, uh, I was just uh, an, eighth, an eighth grader when uh, when most of the important stuff in computers were were done. So, so I I, I might be considered a pioneer, but really uh, uh, I, I came fairly late in the game in the, in the real scheme of things. Uh, I came at just about the, the right time, though, because I could I could ride the waves when when computers became affordable. You know, when I was a freshman in college, it was the first year that there were more than a thousand computers in the world. Uh, before that, there were just a, you know just a few, and and, and so then uh, over the years, um, uh, I, I, I sort of grew up at about the time when the, when there still were easy problems left to solve. And, and so, you know, we, we had first cut at those, and then, uh, and, and now, uh, well, it, there's still great stuff that uh, need, that's being discovered that, that is, is fairly near the surface, fairly near the root. Uh, it's not all, you know, it's not all been solved yet, but, uh, but it, it sure is a heck of a lot more challenging now when there's, uh, yep. when there are tens of thousands of people in the, um, uh, all, all looking at uh, at things from where there was only a few, few dozens of us. Yeah. Since mm. a lot of people are going to watch this video, and it's not everybody gets a chance to sit here in this exhibit with you. What's what's important to know about you know this exhibit when when school kids come through this exhibit? What what are you hoping they get out of it? Uh, well, you know, beauty. Uh, I, I'm thinking how. Okay, I got two main main reactions to that. One is, uh, uh, to me, the it's not something that I do for money. It's something that I do that, that I have to because I because I think that uh, that, that, that I, I I was born to be a geek in a certain way. That certain kind of talents that I have uh, mean that I can also. Uh, resonate with the computer. I, you know, computer and I can can, can be in sync with each other. And uh, uh, there are, you know, there are many other many kinds of skills. Uh, and I have not been very good at football playing and various other things. And you know, and I don't know how to deal with money. But I sure do know how to program. And there, are, there, are, I think maybe one person in fifty has this. Has uh, uh, this this uh, peculiarity that I have, and uh, and so I try to uh, actually re you know uh, realize that uh, everybody has a variety of of, of, of talents, and uh, uh, the ones who who discover that they have the talent for computers, um, uh, I try to uh, uh, I try to nourish them, and the ones who don't, uh, I just try to say, well, uh, make friends with somebody who does, because uh, uh, the, uh, the teamwork is important. Nobody ha everybody has their own perspective on things, and by working, the, the, the name of the game for the future is, is networking, working together, rather than having uh, uh, the, uh, each person only doing what, they, what they're good at. Yeah. If you're talking to a 12-year-old coming through this exhibit, what would you, and you had a chance to talk with them, what, or her, what, what would you do to inspire them? So I would say, uh, if, you, if you really find that you're resonating with computers, uh, then, you could, then uh, you're going to be uh, always in demand throughout your life, because there's only going to be one in 50 people like you, and, and you're going to be able to uh, change the world uh, in an important way. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I would say if you're that age, uh, uh, spend a lot of time 
also learning how to communicate, learning how to write. Uh, don't don't uh, don't go 90% of your life into computers, but balance it all off and be a and 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 because uh, the the thing that's going to be most important in your future career is not uh, the, your greatest strength, but your greatest weakness is it, it, going to define you. So if you have a something that you're not able to do well. That's going to hold you back more than if you can do something spectacular. So, so I like to, to recommend that people become well-rounded. Um, and uh, I, I uh, uh, also uh, because I have this idea that 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 uh, programming is a little bit. It, it takes it takes a little uh, what do you call it strange you know quirky. Uh, still, a programmer can't can't uh, design something for other people to use unless uh, unless uh, he, he has some idea as to what other people are like. And uh, so that's why this this collaboration is very important because we, we work together and we see. Uh, from each other, uh, how, how to work. No, and I, when I interviewed Mark Zuckerberg, for instance, it's yeah. very clear that he he studied psychology in school, and he understands how people think and work, and yeah. what's going to get them addicted to his system, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, uh, that, and you know, I, I married an artist. You know, it's very important to me. I also, uh, uh, I guess I started out with the idea of beauty and uh, the things I like about this exhibit is that it's beautiful. The, the way they chose the, uh, the textures, the, the materials, the, the style of, of, of typography, um, all, all the way through um, is uh, elegant on many levels. So. Yeah. Well, we're going to get a, a more thorough tour in a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. If you were sitting with some of the other people who are doing the bleeding edge work of today, Mark Zuckerberg or you know the two guys who started Google, what, what would yeah. you be uh, talking with them about? What, what are you what intellectually you curious about today's systems? Well, because some of those will walk through this hallway too. <laughs> yeah, no. It, it, the cases you mentioned, we could, we'd be trying to talk about how you deal with the masses of data, and I mean, for, for example, Facebook. It all seems uh, it, it all seems easy when you're using it, but in fact, if you know something about computers, you realize that uh, uh, how did how are they able to do this so fast? How are they able to to get all this information from from uh, uh, with all the millions of, of people who are involved with it? And, uh, and and well, I found out that uh, one, one of our professors uh, consulted to Facebook. He, he, he said, "Well, yeah, actually, they have it all in one big computer, and all in all in in, in core. Uh, I, I mean, the basic stuff uh, at, at once. But then you have to replicate it out, uh, make copies of it, so that uh, uh, the, the data goes out uh, uh, without getting." Traffic jams. Uh, so that's the kind of thing we would talk about. Uh, uh, so you talk about memcached. How did you make it look so easy? You know. Would you talk about memcached then, and, uh, and understand kind, his uh, various kinds of yeah. I, I, and if I were with you know different people, I would also you know talk about my pet peeves about a lot of stupid decisions that are being made by uh, by various uh, 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 engineers, in my opinion. <laughs> Tell me about some of them. Well, you know, uh, we'll see what the, the, the uh, I don't know anybody who likes multi-core except the people who are, are you know, are, are manufacturing the chips and they're trying to say, well, now it's, you know, we're, we're giving you all this great, uh, this great hardware. So, so you're not talking about Facebook, you're talking about the chip. I'm design. talking about, yeah, I'm talking about things like that. And, and, and yeah, no, the software uh, user interfaces, I'm not, uh, I, um, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty well, uh, uh, I, you know, I think the, the next breakthrough in that area is going to be in connection with uh, uh, visualization of things like medical uh, 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 conditions and, and so on. There's a, there's a great need to, uh, uh, to, to have some, uh, so that doctors and patients can better understand their diseases and so on. And, and there's huge uh, 
opportunities there. I don't know what's, what the answer is going to be, but that's a, that's a killer app for the next 10 years. Get, getting back to multi-core, because I hear this yeah. complaint from programmers. I used to work at Microsoft, and, yeah. and the programmers there were tearing their hair out trying to make yeah. it easier, and they, they still, I don't think, have arrived there. What, what can you do? So the chip designers are just passing the buck. You know, they're, they're, uh, they ran out of ideas, and so they said, okay, now it's your job. It's your problem, but you know they. Uh, uh, so um, uh, I was glad to see that Dave Patterson had expressed this. Uh, uh, you know, it's politically incorrect to say that it's, that that is true. And, and these uh, these multi cores actually do uh, a lot of important things well. And and so if you're if, if you're doing video games uh, and or you're doing uh, a certain kind of calculations that physicists like to have and, and, and I can think of lots and lots of applications where multi-core is a super thing. The trouble is uh, if I look at the last 2,000 programs I've written, maybe two of them are helped by multi-core. So uh, it's helping only, you know, some people and that's why I'm not really happy about myself because it, because I, well, I can see how in the last week, uh, what of the things that I did with computers uh, would actually have been improved by multi-core and the answer is uh, it's very hard to think of any. Yeah. When Steve Watson and I showed, showed me through this exhibit, uh, he talked about the architectures and how at certain points in history, the architecture that ran the computer changed. And I, yeah. it seems like we're in the middle of another one where it's shifting to graphic processors. And NVIDIA just made a deal with Intel, right? Yeah. Just last week at CES. Right. That's going to make the programming, uh, that can make the programming different. And it might be that actually a different kind of, uh, it, it also might mean that uh, people like me aren't going to be good at programming anymore in 10 years. I mean, just the fact that I, I'm, I'm good at the kind of computers we have now doesn't have any promise that I'll be able to, that I'll be able to cope with some other kind of machine. It's uh, it, you know I, 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 I'm uh, uh, specifically uh, oriented towards computers the way they were when I grew up, um, and uh, uh, I, I don't just. Uh, uh,